Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are all having a wonderful day. Today we're going to be talking about how to close your reptile business and how to sell off your reptiles. You may have seen my last video where I announced I was leaving. That video was more about why I'm leaving the reptile hobby. This video is actually how I went about it. This is going to be my first video in my kind of final thoughts series, if you will. And today we're going to be talking about how I went about selling off my reptiles. So far it's worked out pretty well. And the reason I'm making this, number one, is because I am leaving, but number two, this is something that I don't think many people ever talk about. And even myself, I've often talked about how to get into the reptile hobby, what I would do if I could start over again, and that kind of stuff, but I've never talked about how to leave. And one of the unfortunate things is, is that people come and go, and so if you're one of the people who's on the way out, I hope you find this video very helpful, and even if you're not, you might just find this interesting. And so with that being said, let's jump right in. So the first thing that I did when I was choosing to close my business down is really, really, really consider if this is what you want to do because this is a highly irreversible decision if you choose to go through with it. And so if you start selling off your animals, it is going to be extremely hard and such a headache to try and get them back. And so before you sell anything, you do anything, really sit down and consider it. And if you're on the fence, you should really think about it some more because if you start selling them and now you want to get them back, it's not impossible depending on how many you've sold, but it is sure going to be a major, major headache. And I can't even imagine trying to do that at this point for me, especially, but even for you, don't do that. So really consider it, really sit down, really think about it before you make any rush decisions as well. So if you decide to go through with it, the first thing that I've done, which has worked out well for me, is I made a plan. I decided when, meaning a time frame, and how much, how much money I wanted to receive um, from selling my animals. And so I'll tell you my plan first, and then we'll talk a little bit about it. My plan was to sell them within one year, and how much, how much money I wanted to receive from them was, I wanted to try and get as close to as what I had invested as possible, meaning if I had paid $2,000 for the geckos, I wanted to get $2,000 back, right? And so that was my goal, try and sell them all within one year and try and get as close to what I had spent as possible. And so for you, there's kind of a couple things to consider on the time and money scale. If you are really wanting to get out of it, you could sell them all tomorrow if you made them all $1, right? And it's gonna depend how many reptiles you have as well. Just for reference, I was selling about 178 to be specific, and they were all crested geckos, various sizes and morphs, um, but 178 is my number. For you, it may be different, um, but that's something to consider as well. But back to what I was saying, if you made them all $1, you could sell them tomorrow, which is on the extreme short time frame, right? And on the other extreme long time frame, you could try and get as much money out of them as possible, but that is going to take a very, very long time. And depending on how much you're trying to get, you actually might start losing money based on the care and the maintenance and the opportunity costs of the things you could have been doing in the meantime of trying to sell all these reptiles. So I would, saw, I would try and keep it under a year because over that you're really, I don't think you're really having much to gain. And it obviously depends on how many you have, but any more than that and I would really consider it. And if you're trying to get out really quick, just know you're probably not gonna get that much money. But the middle ground of that is a reasonable amount of time, which I would say is a couple months, and a reasonable amount of money. You're not gonna get the most, you're not gonna get the least, you're probably gonna get somewhere in the middle, and I think this is a good place to be, and that's kind of where I was at. The time frame may, may shift to as you start to sell them, which is what I found out. Originally, when I told a couple people, which we'll talk about, but originally when I had told a couple people, I thought this might go into 2025 for me. Then I started to see how easy it was to sell some of them, and I was like, okay, maybe by the end of 2024. And now it's only been 75-ish days or so, and I've sold almost all of them off. So I started with 178 that I needed to sell, and I'm down to seven that I need to sell. And so most of them are gone, and it's been very quick compared to what I thought it was gonna take. And for how much, I wanted to get back to close to what I had spent, and I've done that, and so it's really worked out very well. And I think there's one other thing that goes along with this plan part, and that is to have realistic expectations of what you may receive back from selling off your collection and your animals, because depending on your situation, it's gonna be, it could be potentially very difficult to get back what you spent, depending if you're a newer keeper. So for me, I've been breeding for a while, and so I've had animals that I've produced that didn't cost me anything, 
But if you had just went and bought all your geckos last year, haven't produced any, and now you got to sell those all, when the market was really high, when you purchased them, and now it's a lot lower, you might be losing money. And if you're someone who's been breeding a long time and had mostly geckos that you've produced and you didn't pay anything for, you might be able to make a lot of money, right? It really depends. And for me, I was somewhere in the middle because I've always bought a lot of geckos, but I've also produced a lot of geckos. And so it kind of evened out for me. But the realistic expectations portion is, let's just, okay, I'll, I can be honest with you because it doesn't really matter anymore, right? Um, I've, I've made some, not necessarily poor purchase decisions, but what happened is for me, in my case specifically, there was some geckos I had purchased. I would say there's five to 10 of them that I purchased for one to $2,000 each. And I had purchased them specifically because they were something I was looking for to start a project. And they were very specific animals with traits that were hard to find. And so I was willing to pay a little bit more money for them. And I knew that I was paying, I was overpaying for them at the time last year in 2022, but I was willing to get them because they had very specific traits. And I knew that when I would go to sell them, if I ever did, I would lose money. But here was the thing. I didn't expect to be selling them ever or potentially for a very long time because I was going to be breeding them. But now when it turns around and I'm trying to sell them this year, I had to be realistic with what I was going to get for them. And so I did take a big substantial loss on some of them and others I made money on. So for example, some of those ones, I bought one for 1200, I ended up selling it for six. Uh, there was another one I bought for 1500, ended up selling it for 700. Another one I bought 1600, 1669, I sold it for 500. Um, what else? One that was 600 that I sold for 300. Anyway, point is those were some big losses, right? That I paid, you know, that much and I lost that much when I went to sell them. And then that was because I overpaid when I bought them and I knew that they were going to be worth not as much, but they were specific things I wanted and I needed for my project. So I was willing to do that. The other thing that may happen to you is depending on when you're trying to sell is market shifts. So for example, I've talked about this one already, but I had purchased two het azanthix, one lily white and one normal, uh, both males. I paid $10,300 for the two of them and I ended up selling them, one's not fully sold yet, but I ended up selling them for $3,300, right? And so that was a $7,000 loss to me when I went to sell them. And that wasn't because I overpaid for them at the time. I actually got a decent, reasonable price, but the market shift so much in one or two years that now those geckos are worth a lot less. And so since I'm trying to sell them or I did sell them, took a big hit there. But if you've produced some animals you didn't have to pay for, hopefully it makes it makes up for whatever losses you may have. In my case, that's why I was just trying to get back to what I had originally invested in the animals. So from the ones I lost a lot of money on, the ones I made some money on, I was just trying to break even. But if I did not have realistic expectations going into this, I could still be holding on to all of those animals today because frankly, I would never get what I fully paid for them again, probably, right? And so you just gotta realize that you're gonna make some, you're gonna lose some, have realistic expectations going into it and realize that you're probably gonna lose some money on some and make some money on others. I hope I got the point across in that it was kind of a ramble. But anyway, once you've got your plan, you know how long you want it to take, couple months, how much you'd like to get, which can change, both of these can change, and you have some realistic expectations going into it, you're on to the next step, which is maybe the hardest step, which is don't tell anyone publicly. And there's a reason for this. And this is probably one of the things that saved me the most. And it's not because you're trying to be sneaky or you're trying to, you know, deceive people. But truthfully, most of us have spent a lot of money and a lot of time on our animals. And I think personally that it's reasonable that you would like to get a fair price for them, right? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I've talked about this a little bit in my last video, but if you announce that you're leaving the hobby and you're selling off all your animals, the first thing that comes into my mind as a human and probably everyone else's mind is, ooh, I can get a good deal here. Or I can get a cheap animal that's worth a lot more than what they're gonna sell it to me for, right? And so if you announce this publicly, people are going to harass you. Not necessarily, I put the word harass is maybe a bad way. People are going to try and negotiate a lot with you, try and get deals with you. They know you're leaving and you lose the leverage you have on the selling situation, right? Versus if you just went about it like you're selling normal animals like you would any other year, right? You don't want to lose your 
not necessarily advantage, but kind of in a way, right? And having done this now where I sold the majority of my animals just like I would normally and getting a fair price, what I feel is a fair price for them, and then finally announcing it last week, I announced that video last week and after that video, I literally, not even exaggerating, had about 25 people message me or DM me, you know, asking if I had any wholesale deals, any deals, any group deals, if I would take 25% of what I was asking for them, right? And so I expected that though. I knew it was gonna happen once I announced it and I was ready for it, going back to realistic expectations. And the people weren't doing it in a you know nefarious way, right? But they know I'm leaving. They know I wanna sell my animals. They have the power in the selling dynamic there. And so that's why they did it, right? And so I knew that would happen. But if you don't announce this publicly, you're gonna get a lot more for your animals and you're not gonna have people basically annoying you <laughs> for whatever span of time it takes to sell all your animals off. Tell as few people as you can. You, if you wanna tell your friends, whatever, you know, nothing wrong with that. I did that too. I told a couple people privately. And as I sold more and more, I started to tell more and more people if they asked, but I didn't officially announce it publicly until last week. I think that worked out really well. And I think that's one of the big things that made this easy and an easier transition. So that would be my advice to you. I've seen other people do it in reverse where they announce it publicly and then, you know, just get spammed with messages of people wheeling and dealing. And I guess that's not bad if you really want to sell all your animals quickly and you don't mind taking, you know, 25% or 50% of what they're worth on all of your animals. I think that's fine to go about it that way. But if you'd like to get a little bit more, maybe don't announce it publicly. The third step is once you reach your money goal or your time limit, then you can slowly start to wheel and deal a little bit more. And so for me, once I started to get close to my money limit, I was willing to negotiate a little bit more to just move animals. Because to me, it wasn't really as much as trying to make as much as I could. It was just to move the animals at a reasonable pace, get a reasonable price, and so that it continues to chug along down the road. And so if you reach your time limit, let's say it was six months and you're starting to get close to the six months and you'd really like to have them gone, you can start to negotiate a little bit more. If you don't mind keeping them longer, then don't. Um, but if you get close to one of your goals, either your time limit or your, how much you wanted to receive, I feel like it's fine to start negotiating a little bit more and maybe dealing a little bit more on the animals. If you want to, you don't have to, but it just keeps things moving along at a reasonable pace, right? And once you finally announce it publicly, which is step four, is announce it and let people know that you're leaving, um, I think it's just the right thing to do. Maybe you don't have to say why necessarily, but if, unless you want to, of course, but once you announce it, um, you still don't have to settle because like I said, when I announced it, I got all those messages of people, you know, trying to deal 25% off or get, get the geckos for 25% of what I was asking for them. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. You might feel pressured um, just based on how many messages you may or may not get, but you don't have to do that, right? There's nothing that says you have to take you know, $100 on the $500 Lily White or the $400 Lily White, right? You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but you can if you'd just like to get rid of the rest of the animals. And so this has been really um, beneficial for me. And if you're considering leaving the hobby, I would seriously consider doing it this way. Um, it's just worked really well for me so far. Just to recap quickly, make a plan, how long you wanna sell them in, how much you would like to get. Don't tell anyone about it, start selling them. Once you feel like you've reached your goals, you can probably trickle it off a little bit more and that'll help you move your animals faster. You're still gonna get some money. And that being said, then you're out of the hobby and that's that. And so I hope you found this video helpful if you're considering leaving. I hope you're not. The Crested Gecko Space is a great place to be. But with that being said, that's just how I would go about it if I was to leave the reptile hobby again. And yeah, I think that's about it. Thanks for listening and I will see you next week.